Hi, I'm John Greer. I serve as one of the utility specialists here in the Comptroller's Office and as Technical Secretary to the Water and Wastewater Financing Board and the Utility Management Review Board. We're here today to give you a brief overview of training requirements for board members that oversee government utilities in Tennessee. This is by no means meant to be legal advice or specific for your situation. At the end of the presentation, we'll have our contact information up on the screen, and we encourage you to call us if you do have specific questions. Now let's take a look at which entities have to have this training for utilities. As you can see, all utility types in Tennessee are subject to board training at this point. If you serve on a utility district, you've been subject to the requirements since 2010. If you serve on a city, county, or treatment authority, you're subject to the training requirements since 2017 April to be specific. If you were serving before April 2017, you're not required to have the training until your next re-election or reappointment after that date. What kind of training do you have to have? Well, all commissioners in Tennessee are required to have the same training. 12 hours within one year of election or appointment, or if you serve on a city, county, or authority and you're being re-elected or reappointed, the same 12 hours within one year standard applies to you. After you get that initial 12 hours, you only have to have 12 hours every three years for as long as you continue to serve. Let's take a look at a few examples to hopefully clear up some of the confusion. Let's say John gets appointed on January 1st, 2020. He must receive 12 hours of training by December 31st, 2020. His continuing education period would start on January 1st, 2021, and he'd have to receive an additional 12 hours on or before December 31st, 2023. Whatever year John finishes his initial 12 hours in, his continuing education period starts on the January 1 of the following year. That can be confusing, so let's look at another example. Let's say Ross is appointed or elected on June 1st, 2020. He has until May 31st, 2021 to complete his initial 12 hours of training. If Ross were to complete those 12 hours on or before December 31st, 2020, his three year continuing education period would start on January 1st of 2021. If he were to complete that 12 hours of training after January 1st, 2021, but before his deadline of May 31st, 2021, his continuing education period of three years would start on January 1st, 2022. But there are some penalties that you need to know about. If you are a commissioner for a utility district and you fail to meet the training requirement, you're ineligible to be appointed or elected to another term in office forever. The same penalty applies to treatment authority board members who miss their training. For counties and municipalities, if you're a commissioner and miss the training, the entire entity is referred to the Water and Wastewater Financing Board. So if one commissioner misses training, an entire government can fall under the oversight of the Water and Wastewater Financing Board. That board has the ability to impose reasonable sanctions up to the loss of funding from the state revolving fund for those governmental entities. The good news is, if you or a commissioner you know is close to missing their training, you can apply for a six-month extension. The key here is that you show substantial compliance with the law. Zero hours is not substantial compliance. You can find the form to file for a training extension on our website. Another piece of good news is that we offer free online training for every type of utility board. You can see also that we've approved other organizations. Now this by no means is an exhaustive list, but just some of the examples we wanted to share with you. You may be providing in-house training to your board, such as audit workshops or rate workshops, that may be approved for continuing education hours. The key is, send them to us prior to the meeting happening so we can look at them. If you have a training session and send it to us the day after, we won't be able to approve it. Now let's recap who has to receive the training. Remember, all utility district commissioners, no matter what the type of service they provide, must receive the continuing education and training hours. Counties, municipalities, and treatment authorities that own a water or wastewater system are also subject to the training requirements. So here's the important part. If you have questions, make sure and reach out to our office. You can reach us by telephone, 
You can send us an email or you can submit an inquiry on our webpage. Remember, this presentation wasn't meant to be legal advice, but more general guidance and an overview of the training requirements. We know you may have specific questions, and we hope you'll call us and let us help you. Thanks for watching.